Hi, my name's Larry Blumenstein. I'm a firefighter. I'm here today to talk to you about the history of moving water in the fire service. Let's go all the way back to 200 BCE. That's when Tisibius, who lived in Alexandria, built the world's first firefighting pump. In the era 200 to 400, the Romans used the bronze Tisibius pump to fight fire with a 7,000-man firefighting force. In the eras 400 to 600, that knowledge had been lost. The Roman Empire had fallen and no one had passed on that knowledge on how to build fire pumps. In the era 600 to 800, we had many more houses, many more fires, but, but no fire pump yet to fight fire with. In the years 800 to 1000, we began to explore and learn new things, and yet we had not yet relearned how to build fire pumps. In the era 1000 to 1200, the King of England was so concerned about fires that he told everyone, cover your fires, put your fires out, and cover them at night to stop the spread of fire while you were sleeping. In the era 1200 to 1400, we had more people, huge fires, and yet we had still not learned how to build a pump to move water. Now in the era 1400 to 1600, we finally learned how to build a fire pump, but it was not yet used to fight fires. It was able to move water. In the next era, the era 1600 to 1800, some important things happened. We learned how to make fire hose finally. It was leather hose. We stitched it together or riveted it together and then we took the, the fire pump and the fire hose and we put it together in a fire engine. And now that engine was like this one here, pumped by hand. And people would pump the levers up and down and it would, it would squirt water out the hose. Now those early fire pumps were filled by hand with a bucket brigade. People would take buckets from the source of the water and they would carry it over to the fire engine that had to be pretty close to where the fire was so that the fire hose could reach. And they would pour water into the fire engine and then they would form a long line of people from the fire engine all the way back to the water and they would pass the full buckets person to person all the way to the fire engine, empty it out and then pass the empty buckets back in that bucket brigade and we would keep that up until the fire was put out. Now, as the fire engines got bigger, the one you see here was, could pump um, from anywhere from two to six people. But over time, they got bigger. You could have 20 people pumping a fire engine all at once. Well, if, with 20 people pumping, you couldn't keep up with a bucket brigade to keep them, uh, the fire engine full of water so that it could pump. So we invented a rigid hose that you could lower down into a body of water and it would suck water up like you suck water up or a soda with a straw and it would suck that water into the fire engine and then the people that were pumping the engine could pump that water out the fire hose to fight fire. But there was a problem. The fire engine now instead of being close to the fire had to be positioned near the body of water and very often the fire hose wouldn't reach to where the fire was. So we had a problem that we had to solve and we solved it by digging holes right in the city and we called those holes in the ground cisterns and we would fill the cisterns with water. Well, how did we fill the cisterns with water? Well, if you look at the, right up here, you can see a cross section of a log. We, would, we learned how to hollow out logs and then connect them end to end all the way from the water source, the well or the creek or the lake, all the way from the water source to the cistern and then we would fill the cisterns up. So now, when we got a fire, we could bring the fire engine, the early ones we pulled by hand, to the cistern, and we would pump water out of the cistern, and now we could reach from the cistern to the building with our fire hose to put out the fire. Now, the next big step occurred in the, the, the 1800 to 2000 era, and that was with the invention of the steam-powered, horse-pulled fire engine. Now that particular engine could pump even more water because we would, we would light a fire in the boiler and we would get the water hot and it would make steam and we would use that steam power to drive those pistons up and down in the pump and we could pump water. The problem with that was we could pump so much water we could actually suck the cistern dry. So we needed a better way to move water. And we did that by replacing those wooden water mains with iron mains. They were made bigger and stronger and we took those and we made a grid around the city 
And in that grid, we put fire hydrants. So now, when that horse-drawn steam fire engine needed to fight a fire, it could go to the closest fire hydrant, and now the hose would reach all the way to the building to fight the fire, and because it was hooked up to a large water main, they had all the water they needed. Now, over time, uh, we got faster. In 1906, we had the first internal combustion engine powered fire engine, and those fire engines could get to the fire hydrants faster because we didn't have to take time to back the horses up and connect horses up to the old fire engine. Now we could just start the engine and drive right to the fire hydrant, and that was a big advancement. But we still needed to get the water even closer to you because it took time to respond from the fire station and then drive all the way up and do all those things necessary to get the, the, the engine connected up to the water system. So we created what was called a sprinkler system. And it was in 1872 when the first automatic sprinkler system was patented. And what that did was it we, we took a, a pipe from the, from the fire main, the same one that had the hydrants, we would bring a pipe right into the building and into the ceilings of the building, we would put sprinkler heads right across a whole grid of pipes. Now instead of having the grid of pipes in the ground, we took that grid and we built it in the, in the ceilings of buildings and we connected sprinkler systems, sprinkler nozzles up there. So when the fire, the heat from the fire rose up to the ceiling, the automatic sprinkler system would, would sense that heat and open up and it would put out the fire. Now in the 1940s, uh, this, the sprinkler systems were so effective, they became mandatory in schools and hospitals and hotels and other public buildings. As a matter of fact, if you look up in your ceiling right now, I bet you can find a sprinkler nozzle protecting you. So that's that water from the fire hydrant that we've moved all the way in and put it right over your head so that if there's a fire, it'll sense it and it'll put the fire out immediately. Now, we've, we're right now in a new era. And this new era of firefighting is, is taking that same technology that we use in schools and hospitals and other public buildings, and we're wanting now for people to put those automatic sprinkler heads right into your homes so that when you're sleeping at night, you have water from that fire water main right over your head. So if there's a fire, it will put it out immediately. As soon as the heat reaches the fire head, it'll put it out. Now, we still want you to have those smoke detectors in your home because smoke will actually get to you faster than the, than the fire. So you still need your smoke detectors, but the, the automatic sprinkler systems will stop the spread of the fire throughout the house. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this talk about the history of moving water in the fire service. My name is Larry Blumenstein, and it's been my pleasure talking to you.